Hi everybody, welcome Hello. to our live session. Uh, today is a brand new series called Chef at Home. Um, let's see how many viewers we have. Okay, I think we we wait for a while more for more followers to join us and then we will start proper. Yeah, so meanwhile, you can share this uh, live video with your friends. If they love food, they love Thailand, they love fine dining, make sure that you share this video and share it with all your friends because we have a very important chef from Bangkok who will be joining us today to answer yeah. like any questions you have or so on. Yeah, so please share this video with all your friends. Yeah, I'm sharing now. <laughs> mm. So this new series is called uh, Chef at Home. Uh, so we will periodically invite um, famous chefs from Bangkok in renowned restaurants uh, to basically come on our platform and have a Q&A session with us. So if you have any questions that you want to ask chef from Thailand in Bangkok, uh, this is your chance to do so. Because uh, most of the time, they will be if you are at their restaurant, they will be busy cooking the delicious food for you and probably won't have time to come out to speak to you. Even if they come out, it's just a like maybe one or two minutes. But this time you have the chance to really speak with the chef. Oh, okay. So let's see, we have about, yeah. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so today we have with us Chef Tom. Um, yes. And I will... While the life is ongoing, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment in the box below. Uh, we will flash the questions uh, during the session. And so without further ado, I will pass the time over to Eddie to introduce our guest speaker for tonight. Eddie. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Wilbur, uh, Chef Ton, and... Everybody watching yes. now? Yes, uh, actually this um, this is a very special time for us and a very special time for the F&B and the tourism industry now. Mm -hmm. So we conceptualize this chef at home because I think that um, chefs are leading a very different life from the everyday hustle bustle of uh, restaurant business when the restaurant needs to run day and night every day. So we believe that... Um, there will be a new perspective from the chefs from this period. And then uh, we also want to understand about how they are coping with it and what they are doing and how they are preparing for the future. Yes, so our chef today is one of the most recognizable chefs from Thailand, Chef Ton. And then uh, so that Chef Ton doesn't have to say too much about your own credentials, I will say some <laughs> of the main things that, that define you. Yeah, she, he is the chef and owner of Le Doux, uh, one of the first uh, creative Thai food, Thai uh, fine dining restaurants in Thailand. Recently, uh, number eight on Asia's 50 Best 2020. Is number eight the highest that uh, Le Doux has so far? Uh, is this yes, the yes. highest position for Le Doux? Mm, yes. So congratulations, chef. Congrats, congrats. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. And uh, chef also owns a barn, Bangkok which right. has a Michelin Bib Gourmand, uh, Merai Pad Thai Wine Bar, which is quite newly open. And yes. I think uh, he also is going to open another restaurant soon called Nusara. Maybe yes. Chef Ton can tell us a bit, a, bit, a, a, a bit more later. And most importantly, he is one of the judges of Top Chef Thailand. Yes. <laughs> did, <laughs> did I miss out anything? <laughs> No, 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 you're good, Andy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, maybe Chef Ton can share a little bit about uh, how the COVID situation has um, affected your restaurants because you have restaurants that cover a wide spectrum of the market in uh, Thailand, yeah. different kinds of restaurants. So, maybe you can just share a little bit about how everything has affected you. Yeah. Yes, so 
Oh, my three restaurants that I mean currently open now, not including the Sula that is the was about to open, but then it's the COVID has came first, so we decide not to open yet, and when we remain the delivery service with only three restaurants, which is Ladu Ban and uh, Merai, which is I have to say because three three restaurants is represent a three different section of market, you know. Uh, Ladu is very fine dining, and then Ban is, I mean, casual, but a bit, you know, upper casual, and then Merai is very, very super casual. And all three of my restaurants, when the, we have to shut down the restaurant, the revenue went down for more than 90%, all three restaurants. Yeah, so it's that bad, because I think the reason for that is because all my restaurants, uh, always focused on dine only, you know. I, I never believe in delivery service, you know, for, mm. for the restaurant. Because, you know, as a chef, of course, every chef want you to, you know, eat the, the fresh food from the kitchen. And, and that's how, we, how we've been taught, you know, by, you know, any chef we train with. And then, so it's different platform for us, delivery service. And that's why we don't have any strong follower yes. on the um, on on delivery service, and then that's why we stuck up, and then that's why we 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 lose ninety percent of ourselves. Sorry, <laughs> I think my okay. internet is a bit off just now. I'm back. I'm back now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um. So, but um, this last uh, week or so, um, the rules seem to be loosening a little bit in Bangkok. Can you um, share with us a little bit about uh, the new rules after the, the, the restaurants are allowed to open? And yes. whether your restaurants are open already? So after more than a month of of closing, you know, the restaurant, finally the um, Thai government allow the restaurant to open with very restricted uh, the rules. So from the 3rd of May, we allow to open and then I decide to open ban only this week from, from I think the, the 8th or something like that. And it's, we can open, but it's so many rules that we have to follow. So you know, it's not the best situation. And I, I would say that it's not helped much. To give you an example to for the people to understand not that the people not living in Thailand right now. So Ban, restaurant that I decided to open a week ago, usually we can do 30 cover, you know, full restaurant. But then now with the new regulation, we can seat only eight people in the restaurant wow. because of the social distancing. So that's a lot of the seed that, you know, we lost. And then that is all, you know, the money that we're supposed to have to run the restaurant. Because, you know, everyone knows if you're a chef, you know, the restaurant, or even you're just a businessman, you know, if you have capacity of 30 people and then you can op open only eight, then it's not going to cover any cost for you. So that is uh -huh. the problem right now. Uh, are the are the authorities coming to check? Uh, yes, yes, yes. So they, they go uh, uh, in every restaurant, you know, and, and they check the requirement, you know, have to be meet. And then, you know, how, how people see it, you know, some, some restaurant, they can see it only one people per table. Because if you have a small, small tables in the restaurant, so... You can seat one people. You cannot seat two people or three people. Even you come together. So basically now the table of four, you can seat maximum two people yeah. with the partition. You know, between the between two people, which is a bit weird, you know. Because yeah. for me I mean if if you and your girlfriend, right, go to the restaurant <laughs> and then you have to sit separate, you know. 
that and, and and what is the point to going to the restaurant right so true but yeah. but but there so is an uh, but there is another level of loosening of the rules that might come soon right so uh yes are you expecting anything to happen 17 you will have hear something yeah hmm because and tomorrow the, the the cabinet will will have a, a big meeting and then they will announce what they want to do next on the second they call it second you know second rosen you know assessment whatever so they they call the so they have to see that this is two weeks already after the first that they rosen it up and the number in Thailand, we have to say the number of the infection is very low. Because yesterday we have a zero infection, you know, new case, zero new case. And then today we have only one new case. And then it's not come from the, the big city. So, so we quite, you know, I'm quite positive that on the 17th, they will loosen some more rules. And hopefully we, we can extend a little bit of the curfew and, and, with some more seat in the restaurant, yes. Mm, okay. So, um, as a general diner myself, uh, mm -hmm. there are a lot of things that affect the restaurants that I might not be able to see as a general diner. For me, yes. um, the biggest thing that affect me is that I cannot go out to a restaurant to eat. I have to change my dining habits. I have to order delivery more. I have to yes. cook more at home and um, I have to find uh, other ways of enjoying myself uh, rather than bringing my family out to a restaurant to have a meal. So this is a very on the surface look from a general diner. But uh, I would like to speak to Chef Ton about something that maybe people like us cannot see because uh, a side of restaurants closing there are a lot of people affected by restaurants closing, like, for example, all the staff of the restaurant, the staff that we can see, the staff that we cannot see, uh, yeah. the bosses, the landlords, the supply chain, the farmers. Okay, so I think this is a very wide um, topic, but maybe Chef Don can give us more insight on the scale of of the uh, how the COVID actually affected, I mean, different different people who are associated with the industry. Uh, of course, it's very you know it's very massive. You know the the people that the, um, got uh, get affected by this. You know from from the restaurant owner perspective, from my employee that they they have they have they have to work less and then of course they get a bit less pay but then for us we not we not lay off anyone everyone in the wow. team all the three four restaurants still with us and but yes of course they have no service charge because it's no dine diners you know and they have less time and it's no overtime so yes they get less pay so that is one thing and then all my farmers so we cannot buy a lot from them anymore you know so that also another thing is that they have to lay off their employee as well in terms of the farmers and the farm workers so that a bit sad because we we had been working for them for with them for a very long time but that's how it is and then you know everything all the import all the importers of the food you know they all get affected by 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 this closure of the hotels especially and the restaurant so so it's very big yeah a lot of unemployment in bangkok you know i mean in thailand is sky high you know in you know in a decade you know this is the highest of unemployment numbers in in thailand and and that that will be more and more because now i can see a lot of restaurants start many restaurants you know sell their business as well i mean they close and they want to sell the restaurant and in a very low price so so it's it's very sad thing to see you know in terms of you know we of course we we I'm, I'm not look at it at you know we have less competitors but i think we we have to see it as the whole industry and the whole food scene you know i i don't want anyone to close in bangkok you know people ask oh why yeah just let let them, you know, 
close and then you have more customer. No, it's not work like that for me. For me, it's the whole industry is together. And then as a food scene, we are, it's Bangkok, you know, we, we have so many restaurants, we have so many bars and every, you know, every style of food. And that is the, the charm of Bangkok. That's why people in Singapore, in Malaysia, in Asia, in Europe, like to come to Bangkok, right? Because we have good street food, good casual dining, good, you know, fine dining restaurant. We have, we have everything. And, and to lose some of them is not good for, for the whole pictures, I think, you know, because at the end of the day, the COVID will, you know, disappear. We will find a vaccine, you know, one day, you know, sooner or later we will fight. And then sooner or later, uh, the, the traveler will come, come back again. It might take one year. I don't know, maybe six months, maybe two years. No one knows, but, but at, uh, when that happened, you know, we have to have a strong food scene, you know, if let's say I, I would ask you like, if, if only half of the restaurant in Thailand survive after COVID, you know, we might be not able to attract that many tourists anymore right if if half of the street food disappear if half of the fine dining restaurant disappear maybe no one want to come to bangkok anymore maybe they go to you know they better stay in hong kong they better stay in singapore you know that's what i think and then i think that's very important in that that we try we have to try to make everyone survive Hello. Oh, we lose Eddie. Can you hear me, Chef Tom? Yes, I hear you now. Yes. Okay, I think just now my mic was. <laughs> okay, Eddie is back. Okay, yeah. technical error. I'm so right. sorry. Okay. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I'm down now. I'm the main guy now. <laughs> so sorry That's because funny. my my hand my handphone my handphone say that it, it overheated. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so okay. that, that's what I'm saying. So it's all the we have to try to you know to get everyone so wise to 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 make the food scene you know still strong in Bangkok, and I think it's the same case in Singapore or in Malaysia or anywhere in Asia. So yeah, I think uh, as a diner myself, um, and I've been living in Thailand for the last ten years. I think that mm -hmm. uh, the change in the food scene in Bangkok has been. Uh, incredible in the last few years especially yes. the last few years mm -hmm. uh, i even have friends from taiwan flying here before they open the restaurant to understand how bangkok has done it and how uh how they can learn from the different uh like the bars the fine dining the casual dining they want to learn from thailand and understand how bangkok has managed to do this in the, in the last yes. uh, few years so I think it's a pity if this is just gone like this. So I think all of us have to work together to keep it alive as much as we can. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, I think we we move away from the very uh, negative side of things. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, after having a look at uh, the F and B scene. In the last uh, one or two months, I realized that uh, something very good is happening because a lot of um, restaurants, a lot of people who are involved in the FMB, they actually come together to help a lot of people. I've seen a lot of initiatives like uh, COVID Thailand Aid, like 100 small meals from uh, 100 Mahasev, uh, No One Hungry, 
um, there are lots of such initiatives that are coming up to help the people uh, who need help, like the homeless, the jobless, the hungry. So, uh, Chef Don, maybe you can share a little bit more about uh, your involvement in this uh, and yes. what you see that is happening. Yeah, so there's many, many things that, you know, is a good initiative to help, you know, the people that uh, affected by COVID, you know, uh, the people that are losing their job, the people that no, you know, no money to buy the food to eat. So many restaurants, many chefs, like you said, you know, for example, good example, like a hundred meals, you know, there's a chef, also chef, Charlie and many chefs uh, together. And also the Thailand Chef Association, you know, from Chef Wilman, you know, my co-judge on Top Chef Thailand, he also do 40,000 meal in 10 days. So that's a very, very good thing to see as well. And then, of course, there's, you know, the mission guy that doing with all of us, that the mission chef to feed, you know, the people in need and then the, you know, the doctors and the nurses in the hospital who fighting COVID for us. And also I have the uh, initiative with some of the chef, you know, Chef Ice from Son and Ban Ice and Charlie and, you know, Ben and Kunte from Lowe's. And we're doing a market food box, you know, which is we try to help our farmers and then some of the farmers we know to, to sell some products, you know. Uh, the, the example is now now I'm selling the, I try to sell, um, the, I help the farmer to sell the mangoes, you know, the, the luby mangoes. Yes, the one that Eddie has on hand. So, you know, this, this people, is not... people from, yeah, people from Hong Kong and, and, and maybe Japan will familiar with this, you know, mangoes. Because actually it's a mango that, you know, Thai people not have a lot of chance to eat because it's all usually, you know, exported to, to Hong Kong and japan so and now they cannot export anything so they have you know tons of of mangoes you know you know left rotten on the trees and and that's sad you know and in, this include durian as well so so we try to help them as much as possible so now i i start to selling this for about three weeks so now we sell already about more than almost four tons so four thousand kilograms of, of mangoes you know from three different farmers so that helped them a lot and then I'm, I'm i'm quite proud of it you know because because you know feeding people is a good thing also but then i try to find something that people don't think about you know uh, like helping farmers and 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 that what we try to do in in market food box you know with many chefs I mentioned already so so this this how you know everything that we we try to do and and many people not even the chef now you you can see on the street of Bangkok and and I believe at DC that also you know just the normal people you know they just cook from their home you know and come in the in like a, in a package of food on the street you know and then they just give away to the people on the street that no money to buy food and that that is the beautiful thing you know in 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 thailand and in bangkok that we see and then that's a very good side of of the covid you know at least we see that people still very kind and have a very big heart and love each other in in bangkok and in thailand so that's a very good thing yeah yeah anyway back to this mango uh yes i have i have to say that uh chef Ton is not lying because I have been here for 10 years and I have never seen this mango before in my life. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this it's is the first Kong, time usually. that I've seen this mango. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I was wondering why I haven't seen it before in 10 years. And this honestly, hands down, is the most delicious mango I've ever eaten in, 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 yes. in Thailand. It is so sweet, That's so why. and it's only it's only five kilos for three hundred and ninety baht now. Uh, yes. If it is still the same price, please buy it because maybe after this, the price will increase. 
But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, um, this, you, one, this one is very, buy from very buy Yeah, you you never you never see the mango this price before, you know. I mean, this particular mangoes because it's usually it's very expensive when they export. Usually, what you get for five kilo, you get only maybe you know one or half mango in Hong Kong. You know, if you buy in Hong Kong, so half mango, really? Yes. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes, I'm. I'm not joking. <laughs> the retail price in Hong Kong, and you can ask Hong Kong people the big mango of this ruby mangoes is sell for almost six thousand. I don't know six hundred baht. Oh. Which is one hundred fifty Hong Kong dollars. Six hundred baht. The big. Yes. I get I get five kilos delivered to my house for less than that now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, please support because uh, <laughs> not only not only are you supporting the farmers, you are also doing yourself a favor. Okay. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is this is not a this is not a sponsored post. Uh. <laughs> I have no, to no, say it again. Everything go to the farmers. So you're doing yes. good things, Daddy. So yeah, 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 yeah. So yes. So uh, okay. Personally, I have never seen such a big movement from the F and B scene before mm -hmm. because uh, I understand that usually chefs are very, very busy. The chefs that I know, they cook uh, and they're involved and so engrossed in the everyday cooking and running of the restaurant from yeah. day to night. <laughs> And then sometimes seven, six to seven days a week. So this is a very, very special time that I have observed. So um, my next question will be um, because COVID will be over, okay? Yeah. So it can be it maybe it's two months, maybe it's six months, maybe it's a year. But everybody will be back to their normal life eventually. Mm -hmm. yes. But does Chef Ton see this um, unity? And this goodwill continue after this finish. Uh, I think I think of course I think at, after the COVID ends, every everyone back to normal and have, you know, have jobs to do, have work to do. Maybe you not see people give away the food anymore, and I'm I might uh, be busy as well. But of course, I can support the farmer in different way you know i can buy their products and cook in the restaurant instead of just helping them sell the the products because i cannot use them in the restaurant you know because it's so so much of them but but yeah i think when 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 someone in in need in bangkok usually there's some people help you know there's no one there's no one like a you know hungry and die in bangkok and eddie's know you know people give away food all the time you know no one will die if you go to the restaurant and then you're the homeless and then you ask people for food they give you food you know in bangkok so there's no one die in 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 thailand because of no food so no do, do, do you see some initiatives like the market food box or the or the covid thailand aid such big initiatives do you see mm -hmm. them becoming like a becoming like a real organization and to continue for the long term even after mm -hmm. covid is finished i i hope you know the market food box i i we we can be the help you know of the farmers time to time that they they in the difficult position because in time to times in bank i mean in thailand every year there will be some fruit some vegetable that the price drop you know very very heavily and and they very get affected on that and now we can see that we can help them by by help them selling some products you know because without the middleman and everything and and try to help them sell the uh, good quality of fruit and produce to direct to our customer which is you know it's a win-win uh the win-win situation for the farmers and for my you know customer as well for them to get the fresh food and vegetable in the cheaper price and and very good qualities so wilbur the floor is very quiet nobody asks questions yes uh we have one question from ray let me flash it out Wait, ray. Okay. 
So Ray is asking like uh like do restaurants really yeah. prefer customers to eat quickly so that um, like they can have higher turnover or what else can consumers do to help restaurants? I think I think in the different kind of restaurant, yes. Maybe the street food, I would say the street food and may rai when 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 we open of course if the customer eat quickly we we might be able to turn more tables you know in the small restaurant or in the shop house or in the street food that we have very limited seated but then you know for ban and for ledu a bit more upscale we want people to to spend time in the restaurant yeah. you know, and order more food and drinks of course and that is the different uh, situation. I mean, if you go to the noodle shop and you eat one bowl of noodle, you know, of course, the, the I mean, the owner want you to eat quickly, right? So they can <laughs> turn the table, you know, because anyway, you we eat only one noodles, you know, one bowl of noodles <laughs> anyway. So that, <laughs> yeah. that that is a bit different. So, but then the the customer, the how to help the restaurant, right, to overcome this challenge. I think just go support, you know, when when we are open, you know. It, either in Singapore or in Bangkok or anywhere else in Asia or in the world. So if, if your favorite restaurant open, so please go to support. And if they're not open, so just helping them, you know, buy the gift card or order their takeaways and anything, anything that can generate them income. So that will help a lot, you know, to, to be honest. It just helped them to survive, you know. No, I don't think that many restaurants can make money in this situation. I have to say for, for real and from my experience as well. But yeah, you can help them survive. And that and that is the 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 what you can do, you know. Because if, if you not support them now, maybe you not see the your favorite restaurant after the COVID and then nothing you can do anymore because when they're gone, I mean they're gone, you know, it's no it's not like a, oh we cross for four months and then we come back you know it's it, less wrong it's not like that you know so yeah yeah i think it's very true la. so like this in fact applies to every country so if you mm -hmm. have your favorite restaurants yeah do, do go yeah. and support them even on our mama we have even came out with a uh, like blog post on food delivery both in bangkok and singapore so we actually list out where you can in fact support your favorite restaurants Yes. Because um yeah, it's a very tough time for everybody. If yes. without your support, they won't be able to really tight through. Yeah, so right, right. do support any way you need to eat, right? So yeah, order some good <laughs> food to eat. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Even with the COVID, everyone still have to eat. So mm. yes, choose where you want to eat. <laughs> yes. And 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 you after you buy and you think it's delicious, please yes. take a photo and share it on your IG story. Right. Share it on Facebook and tell people yes. that it's delicious because yes. some people they, they want to buy but they if the restaurant does delivery and do, they do not know, they will mm -hmm. not consider the restaurant. So yes. your share and your photo might put the restaurant into their mind when they are making decision for the next meal. So mm -hmm. we can all help out in different ways. Uh, mm -hmm. We order and we can also help them tell people if you like the food. Yes. No, no. So That's a very good point, Eddie. Yes. I think the now because everyone actually spend more time on the social media after the COVID, you know. You can see, you know, a lot of engagement in the social media. So so that will help a lot for us, you know. There's if you are you like our food, you know, whatever restaurant. So help us to post and be be a voice to for the restaurant you like. So yes. Mm. Okay, uh, okay, one more thing, uh, in terms of uh, helping, because uh, I see so many initiatives coming up, mm -hmm. uh, and in my last 10 years in Thailand, uh, in the job that I do, in the uh, uh, company that I run, we also try to give back to the uh, society if we have a profitable year, but mm -hmm. the, the problem that we always have uh, is how do we know our money will be used properly? Because uh, it is very easy to give money somewhere. 
-hmm. it is very easy to buy lunch for a uh, old folks home or an orphanage but mm -hmm. is that the place where they need it the most or is it the place that will use the money 100 percent or as much as possible because we do not want to give somewhere 10,000 baht and then only 5,000 baht is used another 5,000 yeah. baht we don't know what happens to it so mm -hmm. in this case um since Shafton is in the middle of this and a lot of people are needing help I'm mean, needing help and a lot of people also want to help but they do not know how to help um yeah. is it possible for Shafton to give us some advice if we have if we if we want to play our part mm -hmm. aside of ordering food okay we want to play a bigger part uh, uh to do yes, something yes. else and join you in uh, doing this uh how do we uh, are there any uh initiatives that you are 100 percent sure that they will use all the money to help the people or uh, is there any advice you give us when we make our choice uh, yes. to give the money so i mean for the if you want to give out the money that will be always a challenge i think in every country is how how they spend our money and that i think you have to make a little bit of the research but then i think in in this you know point it depends how you want to have if you want to help about you know for the the hospital to fight the covid and stuff you know there's like a main three or four main hospital in thailand that very respectable and they like a they are the real you know um hospital that you know is the charity for a very long time it's an organization that you can trust and then you can keep the money and then you know they will they will use something good on your money like a Silat hospital for example you know Jula uh Jula hospital which is they they're very traceable you know the money that they use and then mm. they get is very straightforward and then so the next thing you ask how how you can help i think now there's many initiatives in in thailand that they not actually accept money and then i think that's a good thing you know like you know for me when i'm going to cook for someone i always ask on my facebook like oh who want to help you know i will go to this you know the poorer part of bangkok and i will feed them 200 box of food with the dry food you know with the some rice some you know canned food and who want to help me to donate some of this but then i will not take money for me i want just the food that i can give it to them and then we we can you know share they can give me some vegetable you know and then like a next week i'm asking some some friends on facebook and then you know some of my farmers you know they will send vegetable you know whatever they have in the farm to to help me to cook for for the you know unfortunate people for the hungry people and that i think is a good thing also that you know exactly that what what you give to yeah. them you know it will be used and then also now it's very popular also in thailand i don't know you see this uh eddie so it's a box of the food we call in thailand is i like a you know I don't know kindness box or you know whatever you know that people it's like a, it's, share. It's like a pantry and then people yes. put things in for people to take yes, right yes. yeah yeah I, I think i think that is a smart idea also maybe you can explain more to the to the audience what it is but then now it's spread spread all over the place in in thailand and i think that's a good thing you know so when you have more you you keep the food you know the dry food or whatever you want in this box and then people that have no money come to take it and then i think that that is quite a nice thing to do also yes mm. i have not personally passed by one but of uh -huh. course the but of course the area that i travel these last two months is very limited <laughs> to my <Yes>. office <laughs> and to the supermarket and to back home so yeah, yeah. If, if, if you ask me where is the pantry box that i have seen i have not seen i've just seen pictures of them and people talking yes. about them but i think with some research it wouldn't be too difficult and i no, and no. i even i even read stories of uh like motorcycle taxi drivers grab drivers 
they they themselves after they earn the money they will buy things and then they will put into the pantry box to help other people yes. so so such stories are very touching so uh if if even they uh are doing something so i think we have to consider if we have something we should give it back to them uh and i think uh chef ton maybe something you can help us is that if you have any um direct link or website to some of these initiative maybe you yeah. could pass it pass it to us and then we will share them in some form you know, on a blog post or on mm -hmm. our facebook page so that uh, everyone can who sees it have access and can go and read about them directly yes for sure Would this, one, this okay? one i can i can share with you i have it in my in my phone somewhere and then i will share the names to you that they will have the kind like a faith facebook page yes and then you can you can see all the location and then mm. you actually can buy the meal for the people in need you know they have the tracking system that you know how many box of food you buy and who taking your food which is a good thing also yes i just i just came up with this one which is a good thing you know it's kind of like a helping the restaurant the local restaurant in a way also you know the the street you know they, they will give the money that you donate directly to the the street food vendors you know and how many ever box you buy and then the the street vendor will see who needs it and then give it to the people in need that pass wow. by that shop and wow. then that so is very very good thing and then i will send you guys a link this this is quite a good initiative yeah this is so incredible like so ho hopefully hopefully this chat is eventually becomes more than just a chat you know becomes yes. more mean more meaningful than three of us talking for one hour yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hope that hope that we can uh give some good energy back to thailand yes yeah, I'm sure. Okay, I'm meanwhile, sure. we have another question from Charles. So, how will you manage sharing of dishes in your restaurants once you, you reopen in the new post COVID world? Yes, so the very good questions. And then now the government is already put on the regulation that we're supposed to help them, you know, share the food. Basically, it's kind of like a, we have to try to put the food in the separate you know uh, serving for each case it will be difficult for for thai, thai thai cuisine and asian cuisine but but then that what we might have to adapt a little bit and which is i think it's doable it might lose a bit of the charms in the cuisine but but yeah we have to do it until this end but i think it will be not last forever but then when it's still covid around and everyone still have a chance to get you know infected we have to take precaution you know at least for for the restaurant and for our customer so so that is when we open fully in the restaurant so we have to yeah to help them share the the food to the guests and then that what we have to do yeah Oh, so that means like for restaurants, like let's say if I myself as a tourist, if I order maybe like a omelette, kai jiao, that means the yeah. restaurants will need to separate it into maybe like two portions yeah. for yes. my partner, and then. But, but, but actually, yeah. actually, if we if we see it as a you know a good side, it's kind of like you get you know a Michelin star service, right? People like are serving <laughs> your food, you know, like when you go to two three star Michelin, right? True, they true. The whole fish. <laughs> but then they separate the fish for you, right? So that kind of like a, the idea after the COVID, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, this is a very good question. Is is in my mind. Uh, I'm actually imagining a lot of uh, restaurants with sharing concept. They need to take up the challenge to actually plate it up like like a fine dining course meal for yes. the for the for the diners to to attract them back in. Yeah. yeah, that might that be, be one tough. of the necessary reactions from the restaurant. Yeah. So, Interesting. Uh, I recently watched one of a webinar that uh, in, in, involves, uh, involves the Tourism Authority of Thailand. 
and uh, the the spokesperson actually talked about um, in June maybe the domestic travel will come back. I mean they will try to promote domestic uh, tourism again. Yeah. But for regional travel to long haul travel, it doesn't seem like it's gonna happen so soon. They are planning regional maybe for like Southeast Asian countries maybe from October, from October onwards, which is still quite a, many months away. And yeah. then for long haul, long haul travelers from Europe, from USA, they cannot even give any timeline for it. Yeah. So as a owner of a restaurant and so many restaurants, do you see any hope? Uh, do you see the light at the end of the tunnel? uh when do you think uh the diners will actually start to come back a bit like before uh i think in in thailand if the the numbers of the cases is still very low like this you know like a single digit right and then if the government lift the curfew and then all the regulation you know together more than 10 people whatever i think i think people will start to come back like you said you know of course we cannot travel but then we still have thai people you know in this country in bangkok we still have expat that living in bangkok we still have many you know office in bangkok in thailand and i think they will come out to spend as soon as you know they feel safe and then when the regulation is is appropriate as well so i think if we still can keep the new case very low and then just you know people can drink outside you know they can sell we can sell the alcohol again and this you know no not too much restriction and then i think people will come out for sure because people also bore you know to be at home and you know it's fun to cook for a week or two you know after that people start to complain you know my friend also you know First two weeks, they think they will become the next, you know, island chef. But then now they want to go out and eat at the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Wilbur, I see a couple of very good questions. I mean, uh, maybe you can ask. Yeah. Okay, from Rosalind. Uh, how do you see restaurant business models changing over the medium to long term post COVID? I think for uh, I think I will see you know short term of course everyone know everyone will adapt to whatever rules the government has and then whatever whatever you know the COVID bring us but then in the me medium to to long terms I think at the end you know I think everyone will still be the same you know we still have everyone will want the fire dining everyone will want street food everyone will want the upper casual fire dining everyone want to go to the bars to the hotel to the buffet you know now we cannot serve buffets you know but i mean at the end of the day i think people will go back to it you know but like i said you know you don't know how long but i think in the long term on the post covid i think the restaurant have to rethink about the second planning in terms of we know how fresh our, our industry you know we we always think you know people have to eat you know we always think you know people can travel you know and then covid has proved that we are wrong you know and then the country like thailand you know we never imagined you know we will be no tourist country when we have the coup, when you know they cross the airport, when the red shirt and yellow shirt, you know, try to burn down Central World, you know, we still have hmm. tourists. But then we never think that any situation will make Thailand kind of like a you know zero tourist zone, and then the COVID has done that. And I think I think the restaurant and the hotel industry, not even in Thailand, but around the world have to rethink about their business model, you know, how they will depend, how much they want to depend on 
foreigner for, um, from the tourists and how much they want to depends on the locals and i think that have to be balanced out you know there's some there's some restaurant that you know depends only on tourists and of course they make a lot of money but then if we see some situation again like covid you know we don't know what's next but they will be the first one to go so you know i think this is how the restaurant business model have to change it have to depend it have to rely more on the local people like Eddie said you know we're not going to have tourists until maybe you know november you know for the regional travelers or the restaurant have to survive until the tourist is back and then if you don't have local customer you will be gone by then you know no one can stand six months with no customer right yeah i think that's a very good point i think for restaurants right it's good to have a balance because uh being like based i mean the restaurant being based in bangkok of course they will need to have locals especially during their peak hours but how about the non-peak hours i think non-peak hours if they are not uh, getting tourists they might consider uh, targeting tourists because tourists usually have a lot of time to spend in the day so if they want to fulfill that time frame right i think it's good to look into tourists to fill that mm-hmm. gap yeah so yes. it's a good very good point that they need to be a balance uh, yeah yeah they need to be balanced out i think that's mm. the, the the most healthy business model you know you have to you have to yes. get from board and then and then that is the new challenge i think for for every i mean for the hotels and less wrong in, in mm. thailand and in, in the world as well yeah yeah okay we have another question but before we go to that um so for those who are still with us um uh, thank you for joining us if you have any questions um do comment in the comment box below we still have some time uh so meanwhile we will answer another question from lg han important okay. man <laughs> important man <laughs> So do you see a short term future for fine dining with long tasting menu format? Will the role or importance of Michelin and 50 best change in the post COVID era? Hello, Chef Han. Thank you for Hello. the question. <laughs> <laughs> so a very good question. So the short term of the, the fine dining, I think you will see and then you see it in in bangkok already some of the fire dining that start to open before us they shorten the tasting menu like a, maybe from you know 10 to 6 instead and then some of them even offer a la carte menu just to make people comfortable and can finish the meal before the curfew you know because because now you know for some people that don't know uh, Thailand has the curfew at 10 p.m. So it's mean that, you know, the, the restaurant have to close by 9 p.m. So it's mean you have, you have to be out of the restaurant as a guest about 8.30. So if you have work, you know, finish at 5, maybe you arrive at the restaurant at 6 or 6.30. So you have only one or two hours to eat, you know. You cannot finish, you know, 20 course tasting menu anymore, you know, with that time. So that is how restaurant in Bangkok, you know, changing now. And then for us, maybe the, maybe the case as well, you know, we have to shorten a little bit of the menu when we really open. If we still the curfew, you know, will not be lifted. So that's how we have to handle in the short terms. And for the role and the importance of mission and 50 best in the post COVID, I think at the end of the day they will they will come back you know to be important when the travel when the tourists start coming back i think you know in 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 thailand of course people care about the mission star and 50 best but but that only a part of of our customer i think this guy and the award is very very um influenced to the tourists you know like like 
people in that travel to Bangkok, they they look at these two guys, you know, and then go eat as well. You know, I mean, most of the tourists, and then that happened the same when when we, you know, when I travel to different country as well. So I think in the long in the long run, they will come back to have the very important role in in the food world again when we can start to travel again which is maybe next year you know so we can see already 50 best has not uh, already canceled the world 50 best event in belgium and then many of the missions uh gala dinner and award has already postponed in asia and in europe so so i don't think there will be any movement much from from them but then yes there will i think to answer the question i think post covid they still have quite influential if we can come back and travel again yes okay any more questions from the floor mm, nope that's all the questions we have for now uh, almost one hour so the timing is uh, yeah. actually very good so rosalind a reply to your reply. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for listening to us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so just to yeah, a lot of important it's people sharp, actually right. listening to us. You realize, <laughs> right? <laughs> these it's are all sharp, people who are those so these are all people who are very important in the in the tourism and the F and B industry in the various fields in Bangkok or Singapore. So yes. yeah, a lot of people are actually listening to us. <laughs> so uh, as a summary, as a summary, uh, to close our first episode of Chef at Home, uh, Chef Ton is uh, with us to share how the COVID situation has affected him, affected his uh, restaurants. Uh, how he has responded and how we can all come together and help the people who are in even more need than us yes so there's always good things that come up of come out of challenges and uh, one good thing that will come up from this chat is that uh, chef Tone will share with us uh, how people like you and me can also be part of the initiative to help the people who who need it if we have a bit more to give so yeah. we promise you that we will share uh, uh the link to the organization or the initiative for you to read up and make your own decision when you have something to give to the people yes so do you have anything else to share or to summarize or you know say to the people still watching uh, thank you very much everyone for watching and I hope everyone you know in every industry but especially in the restaurant and hotel and hospitality industry so I mean keep a good spirit and I, I know it's all tough for everyone but then we are facing this together and I hope we we keep our head down and fighting and then we'll see the light at the end of the tunnels always right so yeah, so Wilbur, uh, yeah. Wilbur, maybe Chef Ton, please give us one more minute. Wilbur, maybe maybe you can share uh, what are the next programs you have yeah. uh, in the coming week. So this is our very first episode of Chef at Home. Uh, we will be also inviting more chefs in the coming weeks. And in fact, the next Chef at Home will be coming up on this Sunday at 3 p.m. Singapore time. Yeah. No, so, no. Uh, three, no. Three, oh, 3 p.m. Yeah. Thailand time. 4 p.m. Singapore time. Yeah, 4 yes. p.m. Singapore time and 3 p.m. Thailand time. Yeah, so that is our second episode of Chef at Home. Uh, in the coming weeks, we will be bringing more Chef at Home. So do stay tuned. And don't forget to tune in to our special panel discussion, which is happening tomorrow night at um, 9 p.m. Singapore time. 9 p.m. Singapore time. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we will be discussing with uh, four KOLs, uh, travel KOLs who specialize in Thailand content. Uh, they are Danny from Taiwan, 
Wilson from Malaysia. Uh, joining, of course, is Eddie from Shenzhen in Bangkok and myself. Uh, so we'll be discussing on what is the new norm for travels uh, after COVID-19. Um, and then we will also talk about what travelers uh, wants to see from the travel industry uh, when they return to Thailand. Yeah, so this will be also be a very interesting topic. Uh, don't forget to join us tomorrow. Uh, yeah, so thank you for joining, supporting all our new series. Uh, everybody's having difficulty, but don't give up. Uh, find new ways, do new things, and yeah, we will definitely come out of this stronger. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So, thank okay, you. thank you so much for thank watching. You, thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you,